All right, so guys, tonight, first of all, let me just say thank you for spending the night with us. Uh, so tonight we have with us Vlad Kapel. Now, Vlad Kapel is the CEO and chief architect of Tradespoon. It's a daily stock pick service that combines algorithmic and fundamental analysis. Prior to Tradespoon, Vlad was the executive vice president and head of technology at Options Express from inception through 2007. During this tenure, the trading platform developed under his leadership, handled 300,000 plus customers, processed more than 60,000 orders daily, and powered company growth to over $1.6 billion in the market capitalization. Vlad also has served as CTO of Media Ocean and as a consultant to an investor in the early stage financial technology companies. He has been building and optimizing the core Tradespoon algorithm now for 15 years. Tonight, Vlad is going to be showing us uh, technical analysis for option trading. Vlad, it's all yours. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, thank you, Kevin. Sorry, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Mark, for having me, giving me opportunity to present to Real Traders webinar. Uh, it's my second time I'm here. It's always been great. Thanks everybody for giving me a chance to present. I know it's uh, seven o'clock Central. It's eight o'clock Eastern. So we're going to spend an hour. We're going to talk about uh, technical analysis for option traders, which is a very important tool. So we're going to show a lot of technology that we build at Tradespoon to help you kind of automate technical analysis and to find, give, allow you to find support and resistance levels. Uh, so thank you, Kevin, for that introduction. This is me, Vlad Karpel. As Kevin mentioned, I was uh, uh, CTO of Options Express from its inception. My passion is working at hedge funds. I work at several high-frequency trading firms here in Chicago, Aurora Investments. I worked at Peak Six. And working at startups is kind of my passion. I also been trading and managing my own money for the past 15 years. We have a fund where we manage friends and family money. So all of the trades that I do, they're not, this is where I actually build the technology and I manage my own money and friends and family money using the technology and using, using the experience that we have built at Tradespoon. I've been mentoring Tradespoon subscriber for the past three years to help them trade. I have a computer degree in, uh, master's in computer degree science and my passion has been building quant models, doing the programming, help me find spot opportunities in the market, automate technical analysis for myself, and share that information with trade boost subscribers and retail investor community. Some of the disclosures before we get into the details is that options do involve risk and not suitable for all the investors. Uh, the information in this presentation is probably solely for general education and information purposes only. I am not a registered advisor. I cannot provide uh, uh, trade recommendations. All of the present, all of the information presented in this video, and uh, myself and the team at Trades will may have financial interest in some of the securities we're gonna go over in this uh, the in in this broadcast. So now that we have uh, uh, disclosures out of the way. Trading system. So what do we do at Tradespoon? We provide proprietary trading systems that scan option marking kit and find the best stocks in each sector. We build quant models to help us predict where the short-term and long-term support and resistance lines are for all of the stocks that are trading on US markets. And we also have a newsletter. We not only provide you technology and we can tell you where every stock trade stock is in terms of support and resistance lines. We actually use our software to, to manage our own money and provide you with daily recommendation where we are doing one trade a day where we tell you how to enter position and how to exit position at what levels using either stock or option strategies. So I kind of wanted to show you how the system looks before we get into the technical analysis because technical analysis is very important when you're about to get into the trade or when you're about to exit the trade, but which names do you trade? I know a lot of you guys are day traders and you look for volume and liquidity. And as a day trader, you have five or six favorite names and then you trade them. You trade Netflix, you trade Apple, you trade... Um, uh, uh, Twitter, th those are very volatile <laughs> names. They have a lot of liquidity, but on any given day, how do you know when to trade Apple or why to trade uh, Twitter? We do that analysis for you, and we tell you actually for each day what are the key support and resistance level for each of the stocks. So first, what you see here is 
we run predictive analytics where we learn where the stock, how the stock traded for the past 25 years during earnings, before earnings and after earnings, and we analyze data and find the support and resistance level. So here I'm going to show you, this is how the, uh, this is how the system looks. If you're a TradeSpoon subscriber, you go under My Tools and you go to TradeSpoon Bulls, and then you basically can scam stocks that have all of our models predict either higher or lower. So 9 and 10 means we're very bullish short term and very bullish long term. Long term is the, our first model. And this is a quant model that runs every single day and assigns a score 1 through 10. So long term trading is a score of 1 through 10 that basically gives our outlook on any given stocks for 6 to 15 months. And 10 means we're very bullish on the stock. Short term trend is we're running three different models, and you can actually see we're running 50 day model consists of earnings and price action, and 20, 30, and 40 days consist of price action for just the price action, not earnings. And then we are signing of our forecast. So we're saying for GPK or Nike, we're saying that the, for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 days, the price of Nike will be higher than it is now. So if Nike closes at $93, in the next 20 days, it will be higher than $93, 30 40 and 50 And only if all of the models are aligned in terms of our prediction, you can see the stock. So here we see 16 stocks right now. Out of the universe of 6,000 stocks that we have in our database, we, the first step is to know which stocks to trade. So we show you 16 stocks that are will outperform the market, and will be higher than it is now in the next 20, 30, and 50 days. And we actually show you not only probability for each event happening, you can see on your screen, 40 days forecast, high probability, 67%. We also show you the accuracy. Accuracy shows you when this signal happened, going back for 25 years, how accurate was this prediction? You know, we want something that is 70% or above accurate. So the second step is price forecast. Technical analysis that we're going to cover today traditionally has been done on the past historical data. And then you have several tools or you do it manually where you try to predict based on the past performance of the stock where the stock is going to go into the future. What we do, we do this kind of for you. So here you see a chart of Cigna as an example where here you actually see this is our predicted price for Cigna on February 10 is $108.46. And we do this for each and single day. Why this analysis is important is that we basically automate the process of finding short-term support and resistance line where they are. So we run independent models for 20, 30, 40 days. We also run models for for the next 10 business 10 trading days, and we find key support and resistance levels where they are. So here on the chart, you basically three, you have different charts. So let's go through this as an example again. So let's look at uh, Nike. Uh, you look at seasonal chart, and seasonal charts shows us different pieces of information. One piece of information that shows you the current, the current chart. So this is shows you the, for the past 90 days what the price of Nike have been. Then the predicted price is show our forecast prices for the next 10 days, and it does it with a, over 90% accuracy in terms of where, what, the, what is the high for Nike will be in the next 10 trading days, and what is the low of Nike will be. So we think that the Nike is going to be $94, that for the next 10 days the low will be $93.91, and the high will be $97. So we kind of do technical analysis for you. You can type in any ETF, you can type in spiders, you know, you can type in oil, and you can actually see what the, pre the price prediction will be, you know, for the next um, 15 days. And I know you guys have some questions uh, in terms of, you know, I do encourage you to type all your questions inside of the questions in the chat box, and I will help you to explain. But uh, let me go through the presentation for the first 45 minutes, and then I'm going to make sure that I answer all of your questions. So 
So the first step is to look at to look at the annual chart. So you see the annual chart, you see short-term support and resistance line. So we see current price action, we see predicted price. We also look at the seasonality. Seasonality is important to see as an option trader, especially if you carry your positions overnight for the next, you know, whether you do weekly or monthly expiration, you want to see from seasonal perspective, how does the spiders behave? And we know that spiders going into May always goes up. During summer, it trades in the channel or sells off. And then starting November, spiders go up in price. And this is a very important information that is very important to know when you're trading. From the seasonal perspective, how the stock is going to behave. You know, we can also look at Nike. And then you can actually see, you know, Nike usually going from March and July, you know, all the way to October, also trades kind of in the channel. So we have annual seasonal chart. It shows us from month to month how the stock behaves based on the historical data. We have a current price action. We have predicted price. Predicted chart is shows what our prediction for the next 10 business days to sh give us a, a support and resistance levels are. And then we have this, like we showed before, 20 days forecast, 30 day forecast, 40 days forecast, and 50 day forecast with the probability of that event happening. And we also look at the correlation. You want to find chart that is highly correlated the current price action to the historical price action if the correlation is above 70 percent then there is a high statistical method to see whether this there's a high statistical chance that the stock going into the future will follow that the current price will follow the seasonal chart and even the pred uh, predicted price a chart will help you to identify kind of this key support and resistance level. So if you're an option trader, you can execute an iron counter or you can buy a call spread or sell a call spread based on you know what your favorite strategy is. So seasonal charts are basic price charts. Basic price charts will show where the price travel over a given historical period. Seasonal charts predict where the price is going into the future. And we have different models. What seasonal ch charts is basically just looks at historical data for any given month and takes an average where the stock is. Our 10-day forecasts are uh, quant models that use neural networks. They learn and they train on the data that happens around the earnings season to come up with a price forecast. And it will be in its very accurate prediction. Yes, and it predicts the correction with the cert with definitely with a certain certainty. And the certainty, you know, if we go back to the bulls chart, and we again let's say let's just kind of like you know for all the tens, so we get really small universal. You know, here's the three stocks, all the tens. You know, Apple, Fortinet, and Illumina. So if you look at the uh, trend, it actually shows you the accuracy. So the accuracy tells you how accurate the model has been predicting this. And 90%, 80%, it means 9 out of 10, it predicts that the price is going to be higher in the next 20 days. 9 out of 10, it makes that prediction correctly. And we specifically only, you only see three stocks because we, you know, the main question usually happens, what is the difference between Options Express or Options House or Think or Swim between uh, what a trade spoon does? What we're doing, we actually write in models the way hedge funds run their, their models. We are predicting where the stock is going to be in a certain price by using our R script and using MATLAB and using quant uh, kind of big data analysis. Since hedge funds can do that, they have resources and they have money, but they can predict the prices. Broker dealers cannot predict the prices. They can tell you, you know, here's the stocks that meet certain volatility criteria, here's the stocks that meet certain uh, earnings criteria or volume criteria, but then it's up to you to learn the stocks and figure out what these stocks will do in the next five to ten days. We kind of do that prediction for you based on your prediction. And you guys, you know, there's a lot of good questions. I like that. Uh, you know, not only this is an expected move analysis, but you can look at the implied volatility. The biggest is, is direction, right? We say not only the range of where the stock is going to be, we actually tell you whether it's going to be higher or lower from now. So direction and range is the biggest distinct, you know, differentiation factor that we have. 
So now let's talk about you know. So now we we have a kind of top to bottom approach. We know we've, we've scanned the market. We know based on our quant models what are the three or four stocks we can trade based on seasonality and also based on quant models was the prediction. You know how do we manage our money? The market has been very volatile, especially this month. You can find your support and resistance lines are, or you can run Bollinger Bands, or you can find different ways of finding support and resistance levels are. But when you have a high volatility, you can be correct on the market direction. You can be correct on the timing. But the short-term volatility can get you, can stop you out of your positions. And then if you don't have a trading plan, we have a lot of traders, psychologists come to our to speak on the webinars hosted by TradeSpoon, they are saying that all of the trading psychologists says that the biggest issue, the re biggest reason retail investors lose money is that don't have a written down trading plan. They don't have a plan that says, this is where I get into position. This is how much I allocate it to position. Here's the signals. You know, I only look, I only trade with implied volatility at certain level, or IV rank, relative implied volatility compared to historical volatility at certain price levels. You know, I'm looking for 30% return on each of my trade, or I stop out only when the stock, you know, my position goes 40% against me. Because you don't have these trading plans, and you do have short-term volatility like we had this year, you tend to lose money in a volatile market. So these are the common obstacles, and this is something that we want to make sure we prevent that by having a written down trading plan and having tools that can help us find support and resistance levels are, and as long as we're 90% of the time accurate about these support and resistance levels are, by managing our position and our capital appropriately, we can weather the short-term volatility in the market. So core elements of technical analysis. While there are many exotic tools that indicate that are used by, you know, indicators that are used by more advanced technicians, at its core, technical analysis is just, you know, in reality, just a supply of study and a supply of a study of supply and demand in the market. The information helps traders determine the general direction or trend from a broader perspective. Here we will look at terms like trend, support and resistance, and Fibonacci retracements to get a better sense of these charting methods. So the most important thing, if you don't trade, if you don't use technical, and uh, you know, some of you have used technical analysis, some of you have not. I know a lot of you are day traders, so you have to use technical analysis to find at the key support and resistance levels are. But you're, whether you are a day trader and you hold your position for hours, or if you hold your positions overnight, you have to look, you have to, as part of your trading plan, I'm going to harp on this throughout this presentation is you have to say on average how long do you hold your position? Is this hours and minutes or is it days and weeks? Whatever you, the answer is, whatever the type of trader you are, you have to make sure when you look at the chart that your strategy and your holding period for your trades corresponds to the chart that you are plotting. So if you are a swing trader and you hold your position for you know weeks, days and weeks, then you want to look at the, your daily chart and you want to look at 60 days chart. If you're a day trader and you hold your position for hours, you want to look at, you know, one, you know, one day chart, five day chart. You want to find these key support and resistance level that match the time horizon that you have as a trader. Uh, so Ethan perfect, you know, Ethan holds his positions for 20 days to uh, 90 days, and this is what we do at TradeSpoon, you know, uh, kind of, uh, even though we analyze stocks for the next 75 days, we using either weekly options or regular options that expire in uh, regular monthly options to execute our strategy. And we find our sweet spot is 50 days worth of data, and we usually hold our position anywhere from 20 to 30 days. Let that time decay take advantage. We're taking the advantage of time decay, and we're also giving us enough time to make sure that we are correct on the market. And our models are all trained to be a lot more accurate in predicting these uh, you know, 10, 20, 30 day uh, events. You know, if you go too far, you know, six months to a year, model cannot predict binary events. Now, our models cannot predict ECB decision tomorrow or if Greek, Greece will exit European Union and default on its debt, we can't predict that event. No one can predict those events. That's why if you do a short-term trading, 
and you have this binary events, you might get stopped out. But if you have a longer period of time, these binary events will uh, even out and smooth out over a longer period of time and give you enough time to be correct and withstand short-term volatility. So again, on the left-hand side, you look at the daily chart. So here is an SPX. You know, I always look at the indexes. You want to look at the small cap, Russell 2000. You want to look at spiders. You want to look at the VIX chart. So on the left, I have daily chart. See you here. You see the word daily chart. So let me just write this down. So this is the daily chart, and this is the 30-day chart. So if you hold in your position for 10 to 30 days like Ethan, you want to look at daily chart and 30-day chart, and you want the trends to coincide. So on the daily chart, we see how the Russell 2000 and Spiders, SPX, they have been moving in the uptrend. We have these short-term sell-offs in August, in October, this month in January, but then the trend has been remaining, especially now as we speak today, S&P back to its 52, almost to, back to its 52-week high. We, you know, we close at 20, approximately 2060 level. We're probably going to make 2072 level, but we are in a confirmed uptrend. If you look at the daily chart, now you look at the 30-day chart, you might see a different picture. You might see that S&P has been in correction for the past 30 days, especially if you looked at the chart two days ago when we had a steep sell-off. So it's very important to look at these different time frames and making sure that if you are bullish you want your long term and short term chart to coincide and if they don't then that's kind of a red flag and you want to consider that that's why when we run our models we run the predictions for 5 days 10 days 30 days 40 days we want to make sure that these event will not be you will see you want to you want to make sure you run your charts for different time frames to make sure that your prediction if you go on long are coincide with your charts so your short term chart and your long term chart show the same signals so if you're not familiar with uh, charts and candlestick it's very important to look at the candlestick chart you have open and close. Uh, maybe it would be interesting to actually see how many of you have never used candlestick chart. If you never use candlestick, just say, you know, this is the first time I've seen it. If you use it, just say, yes, I've used it, I know what it is. So I just want to make sure that I don't spend too much time going through the basics if you don't know, you know, you haven't seen this. Okay, so most of you said yes, some of you said no. That's good, that's good. So I'll make it quick just to make sure we don't, you know, we kind of, everybody sees this. But it's very important to look at the candlestick chart because it shows you a lot of different information. So this bar shows you at what, <coughs> each bar corresponds to a certain time frame. If you look at the daily chart, one bar is one day worth of data. If you look at a one day chart, one bar can be, you know, an hour or 30 minute interval. So whatever the time interval is, if it's a daily chart, it's at one day, it shows you what was the open price for that day, what was the close price of that day, and if the close is greater than the open, then it's an up day. We closed higher, it's an up day, and that you know just by looking at the chart on any given day whether the stock moved up or down on that day due to earnings or due to geopolitical events. You also see intraday period highs, you see these tails, so you see the tail at the top, intraday period high, and you see intraday period low. And if you have a down day, then the close is lower than the open. So you have four pieces of information, which is important. Low, close, open, high. And all of these data points is actually go into our data model. When we're predicting, especially the short-term prices, we are entering four data points for each of the day to predict where the stock is heading in the next 10 days. So very important to understand. So what is supply and demand? Increased supply creates bearish move, decline in prices, while increased demand creates bullish move, upward rallies. So the way you look at the charts, you basically, the way I look at it, it's a line in the sand or it's a weight. You know, if demand exceeds, then the price of the stock is going to go up. If supply exceeds, the price is going to go down. Oil prices right now is a classic example. The reason the oil is down more than 50% because there is oversupply in the market. 
and that's why the prices are going down. United States starts uh, producing oil, they're actually now start exporting the oil, so you have more oil than there is demand, and a, so, uh, and a lot of uh, technical analysts actually saying that as long as we have oversupply condition for the next nine months, the oils will be in that 35 to 60 price range because we have just have too much supply and the recount has to go down, we have to produce less oil and only then the prices can stabilize and start, you know, climbing back, maybe not to 120 level like we had before, but maybe to 60 and 70 level. So that's a classic example of supply and demand. So it's very important to look at the support and resistance levels. Uh, here is a, an example of the chart, whether you look at the daily chart or you look at the hourly chart, but you want to make sure to look. So you have these support levels here. On the bottom, you also have a resistance level at the top. So you have an overhead resistance and you have a support level here. And that shows you that support is where the price has oversold, the stock has oversold, and it reached some support level. And overhead resistance is the red line. So it's very important to understand how those prices take action and how to spot these support and resistance lines. What is this price support level? Quickly, you look at the Apple earnings and you do the chart, you basically see if you do Fibonacci retracement or you look at the 10-day moving averages and 30-day moving average, you want to see where the prices kind of stop. So here we look at the 50-day chart and let's look at the Let's look at another example, SPY. So if I look at the SPX, you basically can see that, you know, Bollinger Band is another example of support resistance. Four days ago, we had a classic example where two standard we had a two standard deviation move and SPX violated intraday three days ago, the lower band of the Bollinger Band, and that's kind of was your support level. And then it had a classic bounce back and close today above the 50-day moving average and reach the 2062 level. So this is a classic example where 1985 was an example of a support line. And you can see for each of the previous iteration, here's the support line, here's the support line, here's the support line. And if you draw a Bollinger Band or you draw RSI or whatever you are tools you're using, usually there's a lot of indicators that you can select in your studies. And you know, and a trace will we actually provide you with the two way to predict support and resistance levels are. But whatever the tools you're using, stick to them. Use either RSI, use Fibonacci retracement, use the Bollinger bands, spot support lines for each iteration of the chart. But that will be your clue how to spot support in the market. So chart patterns can take different forms. You know, you can have a parallel lines or you can have lines that are going to the upside. Here you see support and resistance going kind of in a 45 degree angle, very similar to SPX. If you draw, if you draw each of the iteration of previous support and resistance slide, you can actually see if you connect the values of each of the iteration, you can actually see that this is your one support line and this is another support line. And this is looking at the SPX chart for the past 52 weeks, you can kind of see pair of lines. We had one violation here in October where a lot of people thought that, you know, we're going to violate the 200-day moving averages and actually the market might uh, become uh, bearish, but, the you know, the, the stock market did bounce back and this was kind of an exception to the rule and a lot of people couldn't predict this but for the most part you have these exceptions it's kind of a, uh, if you're looking at the probabilities you have sometimes exception but 96% of the time like this is a Bollinger Band if you look at the Bollinger Band if you look at the Bollinger Bands Bollinger Bands show you two standard deviation moves two standard deviation moves shows you that 96% of the time stock will, or an index, will be between lower and upper Bollinger Band, but just like anything in life, whether you roll dices or you look at the probability calculator, the idea is that 
sometimes two standard deviation mean, means 96% of the time this event will occur within between the two Bollinger lines. But there's always 4% of the time that stock or index will violate the two standard deviation move. So that's why probability is very important, especially for option traders. And so stock traders to find these support and resistance lines and to see to manage your money appropriately, to make sure every time you trade, you don't put more than three to five percent of your capital into any given trade, to make sure that when you do have these outliers and four percent move is beyond the two Bollinger band, then you, even if you get stopped out of your position, you only lose three or five percent of the time. You can never assume that anything is hundred percent accurate because stock market is the system of random events. You can apply statistics to study the stock market, but there is always an event that can happen outside of what the probabilities predict. So you always have to watch out for these events that go beyond two standard deviation moves. We have we had that move in October, but here it was a classic example where we touch the two standard deviation move on Bollinger Bands and we bounce to the upside. So advanced chart patterns, if you're new to chart patterns, it takes time for you to Uh, to look at the charts, it takes time for you to learn how to spot support and resistance levels. I usually use support and resistance levels are for indexes, for VIX, oil, S&P. For individual stocks, I rely on TradeSpoon technology to find the support resistance lines on my behalf. But whatever the technology you use or tools you use, it takes time for you to watch the market, watch your favorite stocks, and see where the support and resistance lines are by connecting these peaks and valleys of each of the iterations. So here I'm collecting the valleys, peaks of each iteration, here is a collecting the valleys, and it is a subjective science because you can draw a line here or you can also draw a line like this, right? So it, it is a subjective way to draw the lines and it takes time and experience to learn that and it's also important to look at events you know why did the stock go up here and reach this point well maybe this was earnings right or maybe the CEO you know they got a new CEO or you need to mentally not only look at the charts why certain prices happen but also what type of events causing these abnormal moves especially if you have a gap in the uh, charts So what is the price resistance? This is kind of the opposite of the support. You know, we talked about the, the red line of the Bollinger Band. This is your resistance. And you can see kind of a classic example where this was this overhead uh, support. Resistance is this blue line. It's one way to draw resistance, you know, or this red line, if you connect the peaks of each of iteration, this red line is another method of finding the re overhead resistance. Bollinger Band is my favorite way of finding overhead resistance for the SPX. And again, we moved to 2062. The previous highs were that we made in December is around 2080, 2082 level. This is where we think the overhead resistance will be. We don't think that the market now, especially now that we're in the middle of the earnings season, there's enough momentum to break this overhead resistance. So as a trader, as an option trader, you can st structure your trades that you can sell 20, 2090 call or and buy 2095 call or 3000 call but or if you're aggressive trader you can sell these out of the money calls on e-minis on futures or you do an SPY call spreads whatever the underlying assets you're trading you can always find these support and resistance lines and trade and again if you use at the if you look at the trade spoon technology where did it go If you go back and uh, look, if you want a kind of a shorter term, you can type in SPY in our chart. And actually the same thing, you can you know take your pen and you can actually draw, here's my overhead resistance and here's my overhead support levels are for the next 14 days 
by using the TradeSpoon technology because you want to make sure that you can easily find these you know overhead resistance to a six level on SPY or the bottom is 199 and if you're an option trader you can take advantage of that information by trading weekly or trading monthly options and selling time premium for for these spots for these key support and resistance levels so here's an example of overhead resistance here's the 10-day moving averages crossing the 30-day moving average to the top and you see here if the short line you know, some of you actually ask, you know, what is your moving favorite moving averages are? Well, if you're, we hold the position 20 to 30 days, we look here at the charts at TradeSpoon. This is a TradeSpoon chart that automatically comes with all of our trade recommendations. We have a 10-day moving average and a 30-day moving average. And if the fast signal line, your signal line, the fast moving average is crossing below the longer moving average, 50 day. This is a kind of a classic example where you want to go short because you have a crossover. If you daily, you know, if you look at the daily chart, a lot of technicians for SPY they look at the 50 day moving average and crossing 200 day moving average. You know, if S&P is stuck between between 200 and 50 day 50 day moving average, that could be conceived. You know, the stock is in uh, trend is kind of trends into sideways but if we today we close above 50 day moving average then most technicians will say well the stock is probably going to keep stock market is going to keep going to the upside because the 50 day moving average crossed the 200 day moving average um, and here, you know, we also show MACDs and Fisher Transform. This is an ex another example where if you see the fast moving lines such as uh, on MACDs, you see the red line and the blue line. And if the blue line is above the red line, then it's a bullish signal. If it crosses the other one, then it can be a bearish signal. You know, this is a bearish signal when the signal line crosses above the slow basin line. So, Technical analysis is highly subjective and depends on the from it varies and depends from you know difference from trader to trader how you collect support and resistant lines. I think it takes months, years of experience. Basically, looking whatever your favorite indicators are. Let's say it's a Bollinger Bands, or let's say it's drawing support resistance lines, or you know there's a chart patterns. You know, head and shoulders maybe your favorite chart, but you find these favorite setups and you study them for a long period of time you get comfortable with these setups and this is how you start trading you probably don't want to use 20 different indicators you don't want to use different methodology you have to find something that it works well something that you easily understand simple and you just learn over and over again by looking at the index and looking at specific stock and making sure you're comfortable with these setups Uh, so trading ranges. Trading ranges are seen when prices move within a relatively tight range of values. You have resistance and support line here. So trading ranges can support, uh, can help you to determine support and resistance as possible turning point in the market. So especially, you know, you look at the earnings or you look at the binary event. As you approach in earnings, you kind of see that earnings comes into a cycle. We're in the middle of the earnings season and we might make it, now that we're in a bullish market, the stock may, may reach overhead resistance and this is a point where you actually have earnings. So you might want to make a decision based, you know, either take your profit and not wait for the binary event or think that, you know, earnings will not exceed analyst estimates and the most likely stock will sell off because there's not enough momentum for stock to break this overhead resistance. So looking at the technical chart and superimpose the binary events such as earnings or ECB decision is very important as you become more and more experienced trader. If you see there is an overhead resistance and there is an earnings event coming in and you don't think that there is enough momentum in the stock to break this overhead resistance, especially if you look at some kind of ranking or prediction just like TradeSpoon provides you know ranking and prediction then you know close this position and on the way the other way if you are reaching the support level and you're seeing that the stock has been sold off due to geopolitical events but Apple stock is strong especially before the earnings maybe you want to go long Apple because long term your 10 day 20 day 30 day prediction you're long on the stock you see that the stock has been rated highly 
by you know by your own analysis or by another analysis and you reach the support level as long as the stock doesn't meets earnings estimates or, or doesn't miss earnings analyst estimates by a lot the stock most likely will bounce off of a support so not only it's important to look at the chart and find the support resistance level it's very also important to mentally ask yourself every time we each add we reach support and resistance levels what are the, binary events that will happen in the past or in the future that will cause these support and resistance levels to be uh, violated. And here's the example, classic example of a breakout, uh, earnings announcements or decision on Greece debt that they will not leave European Union, all of a sudden you have a breakout on S&P or you have a breakout on the Apple stock that will look like this and that's kind of a classic example. So trends uh, give traders an idea of the general direction of the asset's value. Trends exist as either uptrend, downtrend, or sideways, and we've seen that examples. You know, here's an example of the uptrend where we're making higher highs and higher lows. So this is uptrend. Important to spot that, and that's kind of how our, you know, here's how the SPX charts looks. You know, daily chart we're making higher highs and you know higher lows. Except this one, this is kind of a red flag that we have in October. A downtrend, lower lowers and lower highs. So this is a downtrend. Um, what would be a good example? Let's look at the Caesar stock. Oh, Caesar. Sorry, Caesar. So look at the Caesar. You know, you're making lower lows, lower highs. You can see that the trend is to the downside. Sideways trends is where the stock is trading kind of in the sideways. So importance of trend, it is always important to be aware of dominant trend in the market and even if you're not looking to trade in the same direction. But if you do plan to trade along with the momentum and side with popular market saying like the trend is your friend or don't buck the trend, you will need to structure your trade so that you are not buying high and selling lows. So, you know, let's go back to the... A seasonal chart. If you look at the spiders, the idea is that from seasonal perspective, going into March and April, stock market is going to go up. Or you know, and if you look at your prediction, you know, if we reach 199, the lowest point, and the highest point is 206, these are your main support and resistance lines. So let me write this. Uh, So here's your overhead resistance short term. Here's overhead support levels are. So you want to you wanna kind of trade with the trend. I mean, you can be bearish on the market. And I guess, you know, even though our 20 days forecast shows higher, higher, 40 days shows higher, and you're making a trade, I guess you can still make a short term bearish trend, but you basically trading against the trend. So the importance of looking at the seasonal charts and the importance of looking at these predictions is to find this short-term trend and maybe you never want to trade, at, at least a trade spoon, we'd never advocate to go short something that we have a high prediction will happen higher based on our prediction. So if our short-term and long prediction is to the upside and we see the seasonal chart, the trend is to the upside, even though we might reach an overhead resistance, we probably don't want to want to short SPY as a trend because the trend is to the upside. Unless you want to hedge your overall portfolio, you have exposure in the market, most of your portfolio, you're long, you're not delta neutral. If you're not delta neutral, if you're not market neutral, then you want to use this trade as a hedge. But if you're market neutral, you probably don't want to trade something that shows you the trend is to the upside. You want to wait till the market, be patient and wait till the market sells off and this is where you want to trade SPY. As soon as you see a sell-off in an SPY, like we we had a lot of opportunities in the past two weeks, once you see sell-off in SPY, this is where you want to trade the market because the idea that this lower Support level will not be violated, you know, 90% 90 of the time. If you have accuracy 90% of the time or you reach a lower band of Bollinger Band, you know that 
96% of the time or one out of 10 times, this level will not be violated, then you want to go alone. So it's, it's just like uh, rolling two dice. When you roll two dice, there is a high probability, the highest probability is to get seven, right? Then there is a lower probability to get four and six, and there is, and then probability goes lower and lower. You want to bet on events, or you want to structure your trades in such a way that you are increasing the probability of being successful. So selling out of the money premium when implied volatility is high is one way to increase your odds. Not trading against your tr the trend is another way to increase your odds of being successful. Finding these short-term support level and only trade when the stock sells off and gives you an opportunity to go along is another way to increase your odds of being successful and also you know not trade against the trend will increase the odds of you being successful so just like when you roll two dice you want to make sure that you are betting on events that have high probability of being successful same thing if you're bullish and you're betting on six and eight and if something if seven comes out and you're gonna lose money, you do not want to keep betting or you do not want to wait for seven to come out because you know that every four or five t times, statistically speaking, seven will come out. So you don't want to stay and just constantly bet, bet against seven because at one uh, one time the seven will come out and you're going to lose money. Same thing happens here, right? Stock market the same way. You can This can be your favorite event and you can find the stock, um, stock market reaching the support level, but don't allocate more than three to five percent of your money to the straight. Because what happens is you can get, you know, you can, if you over allocate your funds based on your favorite setup, you think that nine out of ten times the market will bounce back, well, know what? One out of ten times the market will, at some point, market will sell off, right? It might not happen today, it might happen, you know, months from now, but if tomorrow Russia will default on its debt or Greece will exit European Union, this is this will happen and the market will sell off. So you will have losers and you will have winners. You just want to structure your trade that you have, you know, 70% of the time you have winners and 20 or 30% of the time when you do have losers, you are losing very little of your capital. And that's kind of the most important part of trading is finding key support and resistance level and making sure you're properly managing your capital. So at 7.48, uh, I know we've been uh, going through this at 45 minutes. We have a lot of questions. I want to make sure I get to all of your questions. Before I do that, I want to make sure that uh, the last topic is the Fibonacci retracements. So I'm going to cover the Fibonacci retracement. Uh, as part of TradeSpoon subscription, we actually provide you with one r trade recommendation a day. We tell you to go long and one name a day. And if you, let's say CVS, we recommended this on February 2nd. If you click on view, we provide you with a stock recommendation, option recommendation, or option spread recommendation. And different uh, people have different styles of trading and they execute their strategy differently. Some people comfortable with options. Loan options, some people are comfortable with spreads, some people are comfortable with stock. We give you choices and we give you, you know, a chart. So we are, you're looking at the 60 day chart. We automatically plot 60 days worth of data. We automatically do technical analysis for you. We draw Fibonacci retracement. We show you key retracement level. You know, here's the 50% retracement on CVS, here's the 32% retracement on CVS. We show you 10-day and 30-day moving average, and Fibonacci retracement is just uh, uh, numbers that a lot of technicians like to look at as this magic, you know, in the life, a lot of things happen where everything that happens, you know, 50%, if there's retracement 50%, or some people like 32 or 38%, when these retracements happen, a lot of Technicians look at this number as the key support and resistance levels. So CVS, if you, let's say, we look at the probability calculator, and we're, sh we're looking at what is the probability of stock reaching 108 or $94 level, and we look at our forecast, we're seeing that there is 100% probability that in 20, 30, 40, and 50 days, CVS will be higher. You look at these probabilities, and then you can structure your trades based on these key uh, support and resistance levels are. And Fibonacci retracement just help you. It's another point to find these key support and resistance levels are. You can look at implied volatility, right, to, to look at the estimated move and look at the implied volatility to see based on supply and demand of options 
what are the key levels are. So here we see 108 and $94 as a key support and resistance level for CVS based on implied volatility. If you look at the implied, if the you look at the Fibonacci retracement, again your key support and resistance levels are here. This 50% retracement that's 94.5, 32, you know, 32 or 38% is this 96.5. So here's your key support resistance level, and we arrive at these calculations in different means, just like you know, there's different ways of doing this. This is purely technical analysis, looking at the high point for the past 60 days. So the highest point was here, looking at the lowest point, and then drawing these Fibonacci retracement. And these mathematical calculations shows them when the stock retraces, you know, 38, 32% of the time, that would be a resistance level, level when the stock retraces 50% of the time level, this it retraces here. So it's just one way to find retracements level and key support and resistance level. Also probability calculator shows you this information. And obviously, you know, if you go to our stock focus list and you type in, you know, any tickers, you type in CVS and you want to look at the seasonal charts. Again, we show you our prediction. And kind of here, you know, $96 again for the next 50, you know, for the next 10 days, we think that CVS, the support line will be this 96, 97 level. The highest point will be 99. So if you're an option trader, you see that the trend is to the upside. You know, here's your support and resistance, you know, around $96. Again, using Fibonacci retracement, using estimated move, you see that this is your support level. We also given you not only the range, but we give you direction higher, higher. Seasonal chart looks this way. This is an opportunity, you know, to go high, especially as we approach in earnings for CVS, you know, in the next week or so. So this is, you know, you probably don't want to go short. CVS when it reaches here because you're going to trade against the trend. But if stock sells off, you know, this could be a really good point to enter into your loan position, whether you want to, especially when volatility is high, sell your credit put spread or sell a short put out of the money and collect premium in that way. So, uh, you guys been a great audience. It's been uh, 53 minutes. We have another 10 minutes. I do want to make sure that we give you this uh, offer. If you guys like, uh, if you like our methodology and you like our strategy, you can go to realtraderwebinar.com and type in Trade Spoon Deal. I'm gonna put this inside of the chat box. So you can go to a chat box, and uh, I'm also going to put it in the questions. Hey Vlad, sorry to interrupt, guys. Just to let you know, I've already put it in the chat box there. Um, you'll see okay. the link. You could just click it. It's realtraderswebinar.com forward slash trade spoon deal. Vlad, Perfect. All yours. Thank you. So if you guys go to this deal, the seasonal chart where you can look at all of the Nasdaq, New York Stock Exchange, any ETFs to find our support and resistance levels are and prediction whether this trend is to the upside or to the downside. We also provide you with a daily stock and option recommendation based on our technology. And we give you the scoop that I've showed you in the beginning of the presentation. All of that is, avail is available for you. Our regular price is $97. We, you guys spend an hour, you learn about our technology, our techniques. If you like this, we want to build long-term relationship. We're not here, you know, for a month. We don't want to, you know, we, we're looking for a long-term relationship. It seems like if this tool fits your trading style, we want to make sure that you use this technology for long-term. We don't want long-term commitment. We don't want, you know, lock you in for a year. We kind of you can pay months by months if you know this does not fit your trading style or it doesn't work for you you know you only commit it for a month so we're giving you 30% discount because Kevin and Mark helped us set up this event I know a lot of you are day traders a lot of your a lot of you are option traders this is you know this is our community this is our bread and butter is options but we take pride in the technology, in our predictive analytics. This is the core and butter of our technology. We also manage our own money. That's why you actually get our daily picks. We expose them and we trade them ourselves. But you also have access to our technology. If you click on the Enroll 
now button and you click on this link, then you can take advantage of this 30% discount. You can sign up for a month or you can actually get 40% discount if you sign up for a year. Again, no long-term commitment. You guys are welcome to take advantage of this deal and you get access to our predictions, our charts, and all of the information that we cover. So go to realtraderswebinar.com, go to Tradespoint Deal and take advantage of this offer. Also, if you want to try this out, you know, and you know, just to see if this is something that fits before you actually get commitment. We we designed this a tool. Every week we give you just three ideas. So if you go to realtraderswebinar.com and Tradespoon Weekly, which I'm gonna put this, this is another link that you guys can go. This is absolutely free. You don't have to you don't have to pay for this, but every week based on our quant models, we'll look at which are the th top three stocks that will have higher statistical chance to outperform the market. So we take these three ideas, we put them, you can use them, it's available for you, you can use our probability calculator, you can use our seasonal charts to kind of get comfortable with our predictions, and if you want to upgrade and you know, try to predict oil, look at the VIX, look at individual names, Apple, Netflix, you can do that, but then you can upgrade. So those two specials are available to you, I encourage you to take advantage of them, and you know, either Tradespoon Weekly or you can take advantage of Tradespoon deal and take advantage of our technology. I think you'll be, you know, if you're a trader or if you're new to trading, you quickly realize that to be successful in trading, you have to understand the odds, the probabilities of an event happening. Just like if you roll two dice, you want to know that seven comes out 18% of the time, and four out of five times, if you roll two dice, seven will come out. Once you know this information, then you can make an intelli you know, intelligent decision in terms of whether you want to bet on seven or against seven. Trading is the same way. Even though you, I don't like to draw a parallel between casino and trading, there it's not gambling. But it both, whether you both things are science of statistics. You have to be, in order to be successful in trading, you have to look at the probabilities of events. And you want to trade in such a way that every decision you make increases the odds of you being successful in trading. Uh, so let's, I know we have a lot of uh, questions, so I want to make sure that I get to most of your questions. What's the cost of the, so So the cost of the the cost of the service is ninety seven dollars a month. After, you know, if you're not if you don't take advantage of our offer right now and you want to try the fourteen day trial, our regular price is ninety seven dollars. You can look at the pricing and you can actually see that the regular price is ninety seven dollars. The offer for the webinar we only have today, and we're going to send you a recording with this offer, so it's only available today and when you get the email. So if you want to take advantage of the 40% discount, you guys have to sign up today um, at Tradespoon Deal. Uh, it's realtraderswebinar.com, Tradespoon Deal. What about algos and high frequency DC effect on support resistance level? Tracy, good question. This is the reason why we trade weekly or monthly options, because it is true that High frequency trading can manipulate the market, and especially if you're a day trader, you can get stuck in, you know, you, all the odds can be on your side, but you have high frequency trade and all of a sudden, you know, someone is manipulating the market. If you trade in liquid names that have a lot of volume, high frequency trading have harder time manipulating those names, especially for a longer period of time. So this is why when we are doing a trade recommendation, uh, you can actually see, our, you know, going back to our CVS or United Health, we are going into the March expiration. We're giving ourselves, you know, 50, 60 days to be right in our direction. And as long as, you know, we are trading a stock that's an uptrend, as long as our probabilities are aligned that the stock is going to be higher, and as long as we look at the seasonal chart,
and we're seeing that United Health, you know, going to March and April, the stock is heading to the upside. We kind of aligning of our odds and making sure that we can withstand short-term volatility caused either by binary event, geopolitical events, or by uh, large hedge fund initiating a new position. So this is a quick question. So Frank, do you have trading venues? Yes. If you go, this is free. If you go under my tools and you go to weekly live. Um, we have weekly live broadcast, so we have a weekly live TV. You can actually look at our partners, and you know we talk about Wall Street week ahead. We talk about mechanics of the pick. So we we have a live TV, but all of our live all of our videos are also recorded. And uh, if you go under my tools, training video library. On the training video library, you can actually see all of our recorded sessions for the past you know, two years. Uh, do you cover the option toolbox? Burton, yes. Uh, we do have, if you go through, you know, part of this deal, you actually have access to our option toolbox. And option toolbox is uh, another tool that we provide, which is great for actually our day traders. And it, you know, during market hours, if there's any unusual options activity or size activity or momentum in a specific strikes, we will flag that and we will show you, you know, here's an unusual activity at Coors uh, that happened, uh, you know, at 8:47 when the market opened, and here's, you know, somebody invested $80,000 and bought 80 call. So we do provide, as a part of the subscription, access to the options toolbox. So thank you for the question. The weekly link doesn't work. Let me see. Uh, yeah, it should work. Maybe try it again, but or maybe like try to paste it again to the window. But I think weekly week link should be working. Maybe just try to refresh it. But if you go to realtraderswebinar.com trade spoon weekly, it should work. Uh, Jamie, thank you for the question. Unusual option scanner works real time. Uh, if you go to toolbox, it happens real time. So at 8:45, this signal occurred, and you see it right, right, right away. So if you're a day trader and you're looking for institutional volumes, especially you know you want a momentum scanner uh, during market hours, you will see you know here's the unusual activity in Twitter and it happened, you know, 9.58, 10.33, somebody invested a million and a half dollars into 44 call. That happens real time. Mike, thank you for time information. Mike, thank you for kind words. You know, we spend a lot of time, you know, Kevin, Mark, myself, organizing these events. We put a lot of time making sure that information you get is valuable and we benefit. We do want to build long-term relationship with you to make sure that you become a more informative and more successful trader as a result of these tools. So I do encourage you to, if you have any questions, or if you want to learn more, send me an email, vlad at tradespoon.com, and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. And your feedback is also very important. If you think this was, you know, too easy, you know, it was very basic, let me know about this. Or if you think, listen, you didn't spend enough time on Fibonacci retracement, I do want to know. I want to make sure that these webinars are better, more informative, and you guys get value out of these webinars because we all, you know, we have a lot of people on this webinar, hundreds of people today, which is great, and we all invested over an hour of period of time. We all want to, we all want to make sure that these events are helpful and uh, informative. So Mike, Frank, uh, Steve, thank you for that. Uh, uh, Jamie, thank you for that kind, kind words. Tracy, thank you. Yes, so Stan, in terms of options, unusual options activity, you do see it, they do get broken down by size over open interest to kind of give you an indication how much the, the straight resulted, you know, to the size versus the open interest in that specific strike price. So it takes into consideration volume, value, uh, volume, and open interest. Perfect. Let me go through some of the other questions. 
add thank you So Richard, thank you for this. By short and long-term input choices, I'm assuming this is ideal for directional trading strategy. Will you say this is ideal for value trading as well? It is. We do, our models do combine technical and fundamental analysis. So when you go to trade spoon bulls and you say, I want short-term nines and tens, th these models, the short-term trend, this is purely earnings, purely price action for the past 25 years, where our models train on the data. If you're a value investor, this long-term trading takes into consideration discounted cash flow analysis. It looks at dividends, it looks at other information. So when you scan and you only get, you know, well, 16 stocks, let's do 10s, so we get less. So when you get these 10 stocks that outperform market, these are all value stocks. If you analyze them further, Starbucks, Expedia, you know, Expedia is a perfect example today in missed earnings, so models didn't take into consideration that they're going to drop off overnight. You know, there's a sell-off in Expedia. So another example where these models can predict the how binary events, but long term we believe that Expedia is a great company, and even though they missed the earnings and tomorrow there'll be a, a sell-off, long term we think it's a good buy. And as a value investor, it could be a perfect uh, opportunity to kind of buy into the weakness. But to answer your question, we do take into consideration both, uh, Richard, both long-term and short-term uh, ratings, but we also look at the value investing. Uh, Mike, this webinar is going to be recorded, and uh, Kevin and Mark will send you a recording along with the offer uh, soon. Uh, Ethan, I'm sorry, uh, can you look, are you looking at the VIX and QQQ? I mean, yes, especially if you trade in technical stocks, uh, if you look, you know, we are looking at VIX, VIX is very important, and you can actually see if you do, uh, sorry, VXX, if you look at the VIX as a proxy for VIX, you can actually see that you know, according to our model, uh, historically, in season, from seasonality perspective, you reach 100% VIX, always spikes up going into February 5th. And then after February 5th, the VIX kind of sells off, and then we have another volatility spike in October. So looking, looking at this information, you can kind of see, well, that the trend going forward, going into April and May, VIX is going to go down. And we actually saw that today, VIX dropped precipitously all the way to 16 levels. So it's very important to look at the VIX. Um, if you look at the Qs, same thing. You kind of can see that Qs, you know, make their low in February and then go into March and April. They are making their highs. You see these short-term sell-offs, and that's kind of show you the prediction. But, you know, we are basically, our 20-day horizon on Qs is higher. 40 days, we think that Qs will be lower. So it's the same thing. You want to look at these trends. You want to look at your support and resistance levels and find your, you know, your lowest point on QQQs and your highest point on QQQs. Uh, again, estimated move. I, I looked at, I don't look at the estimated move, uh, this is exponential, EMA, ex, sorry, Sherry, uh, exponential moving averages. If you want to give more weight to short-term movement, yes, people look at uh, exponential moving average, people look at the simple moving averages. I personally like to uh, use that information when I analyze S&P. So when you analyze S&P, you know, especially when you look at the Bollinger Bands, you want to look at the 50-day moving averages, you know, 100-day moving average. I mean, 100-day moving average has been a support for nine of the past 10 retracements in S&P. So then you want to look at the 100-day moving average. You want to look at the 50-day moving average to see, you know, whether the stock market closed above or below that, because that's a key kind of indicator. So the main point, whatever you're more comfortable with, that is the, that is something you want to use as your proxy. 
whatever you're comfortable with. If it's exponential moving average, always look at exponential moving average. If it's Fibonacci retracement, always look at Fibonacci retracement. I hope a lot of you will spend time and look at our predictions. And as you get, spend more and more time getting comfortable with these predictions, you can maybe adjust what the strike prior levels you are using, or what implied volatility you're using, or you know how much premium you're selling. What is the probability of stock reaching you, the strike price that you are selecting. You know, maybe you want 60% probability based on implied, um, you know, underlying options data. Maybe you want 80% probability that it will not reach that point. So you can always, by looking at the implied, by learning how the stock behaves, by learning how implied volatility for underlying assets behaves, you become more and more informed and you become better in trading because you get comfort level with certain levels of support and resistance in implied volatility and the stock market. So I'm going through the questions. Okay, perfect. Why does seasonality drop from December to January so much? Does this seem right? As, I'm not sure, Tracy, what you're referring to. Are you referring to SPY? Just let me know. Bollinger, Fibonacci, simple thing. You can win. Does this cover futures, metals, grains? Uh, Jim, we are using ETF, so if you want you know, futures currencies, you would have to use the, uh, you know, like I trade Canadian um, uh, FCX. Uh, yeah, so if you trade in uh, uh, currencies, then you can just use an ETF as a proxy for the currency to find key support and resistance levels for the whether you trade VIX futures or you trade uh, indexes or you trade uh, currencies. Uh, Raj, what do we get for $67 monthly membership? For $67 monthly membership, so if you go to realtraderswebinar.com trade spoon deal, if you go under my tools, you basically get all of access to all of these tools. You get your option toolbox, that's unusual options activity. You get your list of bulls, you get the list of bears with the rankings. You get our daily trade recommendations, stock and options, and you get your seasonal charts and portfolio analysis. Uh, Lou, how do I get four hundred? How do I get annual four ninety seven level? So if you go to the link, the real trade spoon. Uh, if you go to this link, just want to make sure I get it right. So if you go to Real Traders Webinar Deal, if you go to and you click on Enroll Now, you can sign up for 40, you get a 497 40% di discount. So you would have to go in and click on Enroll Now and gives you a choice whether you want to pay by month or you want to pay by for an entire year and get 45% discount. So Lou, thank you for that question. Frank, if selecting yearly options to sign up, do we get the same price for annual renewals? Frank, I'm not sure what you mean. If you sign up for a year, we basically, you get a membership for a year. If you select for monthly, you get a monthly renewal. Uh, so, perfect. I think I, get mo I answered most of your questions. I know there are still a few left. It's already 8.15. I apologize. I'm taking a little bit more time than I should. At this point, you, again, we're going to send you, rec Kevin will send you a recording. He will send you a link to this offer. We encourage you to take advantage of this offer. You guys have been a great audience. There is a lot of questions today. I'm really happy that you guys 
I got some positive feedback. Send me your information. And at this time, Kevin, do you have anything else to add? No, Vlad, that's it. Thank you so much. That was some great stuff. And uh, guys, I encourage you to go over to realtraderswebinar.com forward slash uh, uh, trade spoon deal. Or you can go to the, the trade uh, uh, realtraderswebinar.com forward slash trade spoon weekly. At least sign up for the free offer. At least that you, you got to do. Vlad, thank you so much for taking the time coming in, sharing with the community. And guys, thank you for taking the time to come uh, to another one of our webinars. We'll get the recording formatted and uh, all set up. And uh, thank you guys. Wow, this, you guys, have, I can still see you. Ram, Jim, thank you. Um, JD, Val, JD, Frank, Calvin, thank you so much, guys. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll send you the recording out. We'll try to get out before the weekend's over. Vlad, again, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you for kind feedback.